whether they were burnt out after multiple seasons or killed off to make room for another actor. These sci-fi stars left their most popular shows for all kinds of reasons. As FBI agents Fox Mulder and Dana Scully, played by David Duchovny and Gillian Anderson, tackle mysterious cases involving supernatural phenomena on the X-Files, Mulder always assumes a paranormal link, while Scully takes a more skeptical approach. But after Duchovny chose to leave the series at the end of Season 7, the show just wasn't the same. In a statement released after the news of his departure broke, Duchovny said, as much as I love the show, I think for me this will be the end. I always thought five years was enough. Seven years is definitely enough. The company's contract was officially up at the end of the seventh season, and rather than renewing it, he decided to leave. Another factor also prompted him to say goodbye, however. Duchovny was also stuck in a legal battle with Fox over syndication revenue, as he felt Fox was taking in greater profits from reruns while reducing his own earnings from royalties. Sounds like a motive. The original series continued on for two more seasons, with Duchovny making only occasional appearances. However, he did return to his leading role in the 10th and 11th seasons, which aired in 2016 and 2018, well after the initial run had wrapped up. In the mid-2000s, there might not have been any better show than Last, the polarizing sci-fi survivalist thriller. While the show saw plenty of characters come and go over the course of its lengthy run, none were as controversial as Mr. Echo, the drug dealer and thug-turned-priest played by Adewale Akanoye Akbaje. Introduced at the start of the second season, he was killed off early in Season 3. Though many fans have argued about how little of Lost was well-planned, there seems to be other reasons for Akanoye Akbaje's departure, as he unexpectedly asked out of the series before the season had wrapped up. According to producer Colton Cuse, Akanoye Akbaje never felt comfortable in Hawaii, where he had moved to shoot the series, a fact not helped by his arrest by local police that landed him in jail. Cuse told USA Today, Hawaii was not his bag. Real life intervened and forced us to end the arc of that character much sooner than we would have liked. In 2010, Akanoye Akbaje was said to have been offered a cameo in the series' epic finale, where he would have returned as a faithful Mr. Echo. But according to E! Online, he turned it down, reportedly due to a pay dispute as the actor was said to have been looking for far more than he was offered. I am not sorry for this. I am proud of this. The first Star Wars series on Disney Plus, The Mandalorian, stars Pedro Pascal behind that iconic mask. There's plenty of familiar faces in the supporting cast as well, including former MMA fighter Gina Carano. But not long after the show's second season concluded, it was announced that Carano was out, and it was no secret as to why. According to THR, rumors that Disney was looking to axe the actress began circulating after she made a series of controversial social media posts regarding multiple polarizing topics. From comments on the COVID vaccines to voter fraud in the 2020 United States presidential election, Carano did not keep her thoughts to herself. The final straw was her anti-Semitic post in which she compared the experience of conservatives to the suffering of Jewish people during the Holocaust. In response to growing calls for a dismissal among the public, led by the hashtag FireGinaCarano, Disney was forced to issue a statement. The company said that she wasn't under contract, that she wouldn't be continuing in the series, and that they condemn her online comments. The release read, her social media posts denigrating people based on their cultural and religious identities are abhorrent and unacceptable. Willa Holland was a child actress who grew up amid the hustle and bustle of Hollywood thanks to her family roots, since her ex-stepfather is Scarface director Brian De Palma. In the 2000s, she starred in two of the hottest teen dramas, The O.C. and Gossip Girl, before graduating to superheroics in the CW's Arrow. There, she starred as Oliver Queen's upstart younger sister, Thea, who eventually trains to become a vigilante herself. She ultimately takes on the super identity of Speedy and becomes Green Arrow's partner. Starring for six seasons in the hit series, Holland was a stalwart of the main cast and an integral part of Arrow's universe. But in the middle of season six, audiences were left stunned when Speedy set off on her own mission with boyfriend Roy Harper, the hero known as Arsenal. This wasn't just a creative way for the writers to shake up the status quo in the lead-up to the final two seasons, but an exit orchestrated by Holland herself. Producer and series co-creator Mark Guggenheim told Entertainment Weekly, Season 6 is the end of her contract. Going into Season 6 with all of us knowing it was the end of her contract, Willa expressed a desire to move on. Find the best version of myself, whoever she is. 
The decision was made not to kill off the character, though, as producers had a fondness for both Speedy and Holland. Sure enough, Holland returned for a handful of guest appearances over the final seasons. For three seasons, Matt Smith took on the role of the Doctor in Doctor Who. Head writer and executive producer Stephen Moffat was very impressed by Smith from the beginning. After seeing him act, he knew that Smith was the perfect choice to play the 11th Doctor. But ultimately, Smith became too burned out by the demands of the role. He told The Hollywood Reporter, I'd always talked about leaving after the 50th anniversary. It's a very intense process to play the Doctor. The line learning is really hard, and you have to live away from home for 9 or 10 months a year. I love the show, and it wasn't an easy choice to come to, but it's the right time. So, what now, Doctor? Well, time to get cracking, Doctor. Mm. However, it seems that Smith now has mixed feelings about his eventual decision to leave, as he has stated that he wished he could have spent more time working with his talented co-star, Jenna Coleman. Debuting in 1993, Terry Farrell portrayed Jadzi Adax in Star Trek Deep Space Nine before the character was killed off in the season 6 finale to the dismay of many. She'd been a stalwart series regular, was married to a fellow main character, and was best friend to the show's captain. While fans may have been blindsided, Farrell has been more than open about her exit from the series over the years. In a 2011 chat with Trek Movie, Farrell said she was feeling some burnouts after a six-year run. She explained, I was just really tired. I was tired of waking up at 4 in the morning. I was tired of all that minutia. At the same time, her contract was up, and she was receiving interest elsewhere around Hollywood. She decided to renegotiate for less screen time. As she told Trek Today, I did suggest in the wake of that I could be recurring, not be in every episode. Instead, her trill symbiont got a new body in the form of Nicole De Boer. In the 2018 documentary What We Left Behind, Farrell was more candid, describing how she had felt disrespected by producers. She said, the last season when I was told by one of the producers that I was really lucky to be there, and I really should sign the next contract because if I weren't there on the set, I'd be at Kmart. That was the last straw for me. Farrell eventually landed a lead role in the NBC series Becca in 1998. In the late 90s, actor Jerry O'Connell starred in Sliders, a cult favorite that's better than you probably remember. But after its third season, the show moved from Fox to the Sci-Fi Channel, and in a 1998 interview in the Chicago Tribune, the actor expressed excitement about the new direction, saying, It's great to be on the Sci-Fi Channel because we can cater to a more intelligent audience. But as O'Connell recalled in a 2016 interview with Yahoo, things didn't turn out the way he'd hoped. Instead of the show using effects to explore parallel worlds in unique ways, O'Connell thought sliders had become too focused on action and fighting. His displeasure with the show's altered tone coincided with the expiration of his contract, and as a result, the actor felt that it was the right time to step away, explaining, I had learned all that I was going to learn from the show after four seasons, and I decided to leave when my contract was up. I was hoping that they would go on with my brother, who joined the cast in season four. They got pretty mad and decided to reboot the whole thing and blow it up. I don't know if I'm ready for all that. Audiences seem to love live-action adaptations of popular young adult sci-fi novel series, and The 100 is one of the biggest on the small screen. Running for seven seasons, it launched on The CW in 2014 and centered on a group of people who come back to Earth almost 100 years after leaving in the wake of nuclear Armageddon. Despite its sprawling ensemble cast, only three actors starred in all seven seasons. Ricky Whittle, though, could have made it four, were it not for his leaving the show inexplicably during the third season. His character ended up being killed off in an eye-popping twist. The real revelation came in the aftermath of his departure when Whittle revealed behind-the-scenes turmoil in an interview with Afterbuzz TV. He explained that it was his choice to leave the show, and claimed that there was serious beef between him and the series showrunner Jason Rothenberg. Whittle said, He was professionally bullying me, cutting out all the storyline that I was supposed to be doing, cutting lines, cutting everything else, trying to make my character and myself as insignificant as possible, to the point where it was starting to get me down. To get across just how bad things were between them, Whittle added, If this was in the playgrounds, it would have got physical. But I'm an adult, and violence isn't going to solve anything. After joining the long-running British sci-fi smash Doctor Who in the titular role, Christopher Eccleston found the famous part to be more trouble than it was worth. He ended up leaving the show after only one season, leaving fans wondering why. Eccleston explained during a panel discussion at New York Comic Con in 2019, I left only because of those three individuals and the way they were running the show. I loved playing the character. 
I felt I was going to play the doctor my way and I wasn't going to get involved with those politics, and that wasn't workable, so off I went. Eccleston even admitted that the three individuals he had professional conflicts were with the showrunner, producer, and co-producer of the show. He also faced other obstacles while playing the doctor. He struggled with an eating disorder while filming and he felt he was treated unfairly by the media. Eventually, he reached a point where he felt that staying in the role was no longer in his best interests. Before joining the cast of Star Trek The Next Generation as Wesley Crusher, Bill Wheaton had already made a name for himself with roles in films like Stand By Me. Playing Crusher represented a career boost for Wheaton, but after a few seasons, he decided to leave to pursue other aspirations in Hollywood. Wheaton explained during a panel discussion at the Calgary Comic and Entertainment Expo in 2012, Initially, I thought it was a really smart business career move. In some ways it was, and in more ways it wasn't. What I wasn't prepared for was how much I was going to miss the people on this stage. He admitted that he didn't make much of an effort to stay in touch with the rest of the cast after making his exit. And eventually, he felt embarrassed about his decision to leave the show. He added, I just felt really ashamed of myself. I felt like I just couldn't go to the set. I felt like I couldn't look them in the eye and that I couldn't invite them to my wedding. Fortunately, years later, he was able to reconnect with his former co-stars, and unsurprisingly, they had no hard feelings towards him for leaving the show. On the military science fiction series Stargate SG-1, Don S. Davis played George Hammond, who runs the military base Stargate Command. Hammond is a stern, straight-laced guy who genuinely cares about the people under his watch. His characterization possibly inspired by Davis' own experiences in the military. Davis eventually admitted that he had to leave Stargate earlier than he had intended. Why did he have to quit? He was dealing with multiple health problems that made it very difficult for him to continue acting. Davis stated that the showrunners were always willing to work around his surgeries, doctor's appointments, and other scheduling conflicts. But eventually, he simply couldn't keep pushing ahead with work. Davis explained in an interview with Gate World, Stargate stood by me. They made sure that there was nothing that I was asked to do that might put me in harm's way. But there comes a time where you really can't, if you're in my condition. I'm a heart patient, I'm a diabetic, I've got other minor problems, and it's really time to slow down. Sadly, Davis passed away after suffering a heart attack in 2008. Star Trek is one of the most well-known sci-fi franchises of all time, but not every actor involved is satisfied with their character's arc. Denise Crosby, who played security chief Tasha Yar in Star Trek The Next Generation, didn't think that the writers gave her enough interesting material to work with. Over time, Crosby became more and more frustrated with the way Tasha Yar was portrayed, as she started to feel like more of a prop than an actress. She has stated that, out of all the characters she has played, Tasha was the one she held nearest to her heart. But eventually, she realized that she would never be able to develop the character further. Crosby explained in a 1996 interview with Star Trek.com, I wanted to leave as I was struggling with not being able to do much with the character. I had all these ideas and couldn't do them. I was just stage dressing. I chose to leave instead of just being satisfied with that. I've never regretted my decision. I'm not supposed to be here, sir. The superhero sci-fi show Misfits was an unexpected hit in the United Kingdom and helped to launch the careers of several rising stars, including Robert Sheehan. In Misfits, Sheehan starred as Nathan Young, a man who realizes that he is immortal when he wakes up in his own coffin. But after an exciting character arc, Sheehan decided to quit while he was ahead and take his career in a new direction after two seasons. Sheehan told Digital Spy, I was absolutely quite happy about when I went off. It seemed like a no-brainer at the time, because I was just a restless fella who was trying to go off and do as much different stuff as possible. I'd done two good summers with that show. Summers was wildly impatient to do other stuff. It turned out to be a good career move, proving that Misfits opened up doors for him. After his departure, Sheehan landed a regular role as Darren on Love Hate, and more recently the role of fan favorite Klaus Hargreaves on the Umbrella Academy. Corin Nemec ended up landing a part on Stargate SG-1 in an unexpected way. Michael Shanks, who had played Daniel Jackson, left the show after Season 5, and the writers didn't want to leave a void in the SG-1 team. Nemec happened to be auditioning for another role when he bumped into the casting team for Stargate SG-1. They thought he seemed like the perfect fit to play Jonas Quinn, a new character they would be adding to the show. Nemec loved working on Stargate and even got to pitch ideas for different episodes. Eventually, Shanks was able to come back for another season. Nemec hoped to stay on board too, but the writers decided it was time for Jonas Quinn to go. When asked why he was written off the show, Nemec admitted that he didn't know why the writers couldn't have simply incorporated both his character and Michael Shanks into the storyline. However, he suspected that budget limitations may have been a major factor in the decision. 
When Star Trek Voyager first launched, it featured several new alien characters whose presence helped set the show apart from previous spin-offs. This included the duo of quirky kook Neelix and the childlike Kez, the latter of whom was played by actress Jennifer Lean. In Season 4, a new cast member joined, the fan-favorite former Borg drone Seven of Nine, played by Jerry Ryan. And it's no coincidence that her arrival coincided with Lean's departure. Series producer Jerry Taylor said in a DVD special feature, The studio felt that we had too many characters. Because Seven of Nine was going to join the regular cast, someone had to go. Lean drew the short straw, though it wasn't entirely a random choice. Brandon Braga told an audience at the 2014 Vegas Con, To my recollection, it was a creative decision, and it was a failure of imagination on the writer's part. We were running out of things to do with Kez. Still, the series didn't say goodbye forever, as Kez returned for the season 6 episode, Fury. That episode helped wrap up the long-running story of the character's abbreviated life cycle, and gave her a more fitting send-off than she'd seen in season 4's The Gift. There are two generations of Richard Dean Anderson fans, the first known for his role as the crafty do-gooder MacGyver, whose titular series made him an 80s icon. But there's another generation of fans who know him best for his role as Jack O'Neill in Stargate SG-1. Anderson had taken over the role from action icon Kurt Russell, who'd starred in the film the show had been adapted from, but he found a way to make it his own. Unfortunately, following the show's eighth season, Anderson departed and it was never the same. So why did he leave? Apparently, it all came down to priorities. In 1998, Anderson and his partner April A. Prose had a child, and by 2004, Anderson was feeling the pull of family. In 2018, Gatewell.com covered his appearance at Fan Expo Canada, where they discussed his exit from the show, citing his desire to spend more time with his wife and daughter. More than a decade after leaving the series, though, Anderson said he would have no problems with the notion of returning to the role, with concrete limitations. He told fans at the event, as far as punching the clock and going to work, I wouldn't mind doing a miniseries of some kind. Something that had a clear beginning and end. I would do something along those lines. In 2021, a new version of Superman hit the small screen with Superman and Lois, an action-adventure series that sees a famous comic book couple raising a pair of teenagers. Jordan Elsass and Alex Garfin play Clark Kent's sons, Jonathan and Jordan. Following the first two seasons, however, Elsass made a surprise announcement that he would be leaving the series, and a report in Deadline mentioned sources claiming that Elsass was dealing with personal issues. The actor sat down with the rap about a week later to clear the air, revealing a struggle with his mental health. He said, It's sad. It's a real shame. I know that I was pumped for season three, for sure. But what are you gonna do? Anyway, mental health is definitely 100% priority. It's pinnacle. It's got to take precedence, and mine has been… it's been rough. Though Elsass didn't go any further into his experience, it sounds like he was thinking about leaving Hollywood altogether. He elaborated, I need some time to myself. I'm still debating whether I'm even going to act for a while. Sadly, Star Trek is still losing stars to this day, with Star Trek Discovery abandoning actor Shazad Latif after just two seasons. While his co-stars Jason Isaacs and Michelle Yeoh were never intended to last very long, Latif's situation was something a bit different. In the first season, Latif starred as Lieutenant Ash Tyler, while his dual role as a mysterious Klingon folk was kept a tightly guarded secret. After all, it sat at the center of the season's major plot twist. But he returned in season two as Tyler, it abandoned his Klingon identity and began a romantic relationship with series lead Michael Burnham. But the character said a surprising goodbye in the season 2 finale, leaving to head up the covert intelligence agency known as Section 31. This isn't a case of Latif requesting off of the series, though. Quite the opposite, in fact. In a 2022 interview, the actor revealed just what happened. According to a report from Trek Movie, producers have been planning a spin-off series focused on Section 31 to star Latif alongside superstar Michelle Yeoh. But because of Yeoh's limited availability, the series has yet to get off the ground, leaving Latif in limbo. You understand what I'm saying? Emil Armin played Carpheus on the first season of Sense8. But fans were thus surprised when they found out that the same character would be played by actor Toby Anwamere in the second. It seems that Armin's departure was a result of some kind of behind-the-scenes conflict with executive producer and director Lana Wachowski. Apparently, the two began clashing during table reads for season two in Berlin. Rather than working out their differences before the cameras began rolling, Amin and Wachowski continued to butt heads when filming for new episodes began in India. As a result, Amin was abruptly replaced by a new actor. It's a mystery as to what actually caused the tensions between Amin and Wachowski. 
Perhaps it was merely creative differences and disagreements about the storyline for Amin's character in Season 2. Maybe Amin and Wachowski didn't get along on a personal level, and their strange relationship was beginning to affect the atmosphere on set. Whatever the reason, fans may never get a straight answer. Paul Campbell played Billy Kikea on the 2004 series Battlestar Galactica. For two years, his character served as a personal assistant to President Laura Roslin. But Campbell did not sign an official contract with the show, and while he was working on Battlestar Galactica, he was still open to new opportunities. At the beginning of Season 2, he landed a role in a new pilot which took him away from filming for a few episodes. When said pilot didn't work out, he returned to Battlestar Galactica. But his appearances on the show became sporadic, and the showrunners were getting frustrated with his absences. This resulted in his character being killed off. Campbell explained in a 2006 interview with the Sci-Fi World, So after that, they kind of gave me the ultimatum and said, Sign a contract for five years, or we kind of need to go our separate ways. And I kind of put it off and put it off, and eventually they just said, Look, we can tell you're not really committed to the show, and we can't write storylines. So we've decided to kill the character. 